Welcome to another great episode of The Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Brian, where they talk bourbon and, of course, drink bourbon. Grab yourself a pour, kick back, and enjoy another trip down the bourbon road. It's never too early to start planning your trip to the Bourbon Trail for 2023. We hope you'll join the Bourbon Road crew as we pull out all the stops this year at Bourbon on the Banks. So mark your calendars for October 6th and 7th, and we'll plan on seeing you in Frankfort, Kentucky. Be sure to listen in during the halftime break for all the details on Bourbon on the Banks. Welcome back to another episode of the Bourbon Road Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Shannon, and today we are in the Bourbon Road Bar, and we're going to drink a little bit of whiskey. We've got a guest in the house. We've got Joe Clark. Joe Clark Music, welcome to the Bourbon Road. Thank you, man. Nice to be here. It's good to be here with you. It's good to drink a little bit of whiskey and and for us to sit down and listen to some of your music. You've been somebody that we've kind of tagged along with for a while as you've made your rounds in bourbon country here. And my wife's a big fan. Good deal. That's and, what we want. Uh, and so she suggested to me one day, we better get Joe Clark down here. And I said, all right, let's do it. Because I really like listening to you, too. We've heard you out at the Barrel Room a few times, I think. And That's, uh, that's one of our favorite places we've been been playing there for quite a few years now so yeah it's a it's a good spot so you've got your guitar with you today you've got a playlist i see it on your paper there we're going to get into some music here real soon talk a little bit about joe clark and and where you came from and all that but first i gotta i gotta do my due diligence here i've got to taste a little bit of whiskey and folks today i'm uh i'm sipping on some cooper's craft 100 this is a brown foreman product it's a hundred proof uh, they do have an 82 proof version. I've heard hints that it might be going away, but this is their 100 proof version. Kind of created this brand to celebrate their um, cooperage. You know, Brown and Foreman makes their own barrels that their whiskey goes into. So they created Cooper's Craft to celebrate that. And uh, it's a pretty popular whiskey in this area. I know that uh, when I went to pick up a bottle the other day, the fellow at the store told me it's one of his best sellers. So uh, I'm going to take a quick taste of it and let you know what I think. Cheers. Well, that that's a solid whiskey. That's all bourbon all day long. It uh, is a little bit dry, not too sweet. It does have just a little bit of corn flavor to it, though. Um, I feel the caramel. I feel a little bit of heat coming on from whatever that flavoring grain is. I'm going to say it's dry. I think it's a pretty good whiskey, and I'm going to enjoy sipping on this during the show here while we're talking. How often do you get one that you don't like? It 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 happens from time to time. There's certainly a number of them out there that, uh, at least for me, aren't drinkable for me. You yeah. know, uh, they won't make it on a show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest here. Um, right. We we get sent a lot of whiskey. Uh, we get uh, we receive shipments probably two or three times a week from distilleries. And uh, most of them are good. Most of the whiskey gets good. Yeah. There's just a few here and there. They just aren't quite ready yet. You know, they need to spend a little bit more time in the bottle or maybe in a very few cases, something went wrong in the process. Uh, I worked for Angel's Envy for, for about a year at uh, at the Rick houses for Angel's Envy, uh, Rick and Bourbon Barrels. So yeah. I hear a lot of good things about it. I, I've never tasted it myself, but so you've moved some barrels around a whole lot of them, a yeah. whole lot of them. Yeah. And they've got a pretty good size warehouse there. Yeah. Yeah. It's out in Henry County and, and uh, ended up not being a place for me, but, but you know, and how long did you do it for about a year? I bet that put some meat on your bones, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And after I quit doing that, I put, I got a lot of different meat on my bones after that. So. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> All right. Well, Joe, tell us a little bit about, about you and and uh and what you do and and how you came up and just sort of give us the backstory well uh i grew up in henry county i've been there been there my whole life i've I've moved out away from henry county a few times but uh it'll always be home for me i live right on the river in in a town called lockport 
uh, I started playing music. I was, I was about 12 or 13 when I got my first guitar. I wrote a lot of poetry, stuff like that before that. And, uh, once I found out you could, you could put them together, that kind of set me on a different path. And I'm the only person in the family that plays music, but it, uh, it, it saved me in a lot of, a lot of different aspects throughout my life. So. Has it always been country? No, not necessarily. It's, uh, I don't, I don't even know if I would, I would label what I do as country. It's, you know, and I just kind of write down what I feel. I, I never sit down and think I, I'm going to write a country song today. It, However it comes out is how it comes out, you know. I mean, what defines a country song, really? Right. I mean, it's all over the place today. I, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff you hear on the radio, you, you're you not going to find what you would consider country music. And, and I don't even know what I consider country music anymore. So I, I want people to, to hear what I do and know that, that, that that's Joe Clark. It, it doesn't have to be labeled as country or, or rock or Americana. It's It's just that's what I do. Yeah, I think I think if it is, if it does sort of have that feeling that it's a, it's kind of down home music. It's it's about your roots. It's about your life. It's about you know everyday living. You know that kind of stuff defines kind of the country country right. music in general. Americana, call it that if you like. But uh, yeah, what I hear on the country radio today is a lot broader than it used to be. It used to be pretty narrow. In the 90s, it kind of kicked up a little bit for a while yeah. there. And uh, and now it's there's there's probably 10 different areas you could go into and still call it country music. Well, I think it's it's kind of lost authenticity, you know. And for me as a listener, I I want to I want to hear somebody and believe what they're saying. It's important to me that that I'm writing music that that when people hear it they're gonna they'll believe me because it's it's something I've experienced it's something it's something I've been through you know and if I turn on the radio and and hear a song and it's just saying the same old cliche thing that that every other song is saying then then I don't believe it it doesn't feel real to me it doesn't feel authentic and therefore I don't I don't want to hear it you know so I I try to do my best to to just write from experience not not make up stories and and just write about generalized vague cliche things because that that doesn't get me anywhere and i use my writing to you know sort of a medicine for myself to to get through life experiences and and hopefully it it'll come off the same way for people listening now we've had a number of singer songwriters on and they you know often they'll say that you know when they sit down to write you don't always get the inspiration. Inspiration happens from life. It happens from your experiences right. and you'll be, you'll get down to, to write or want to set aside some time to write. And you'll just remember what happened to you a couple of weeks ago and, and that'll spark a song. And yeah, it's hard, it's hard to, I, I personally don't have that creative side to me. So I, it, it would be hard for me to, to do that, but I can understand where you need, you need that inspiration. You can't just sit down and say, okay, let me pick a subject. Let me pick a topic. Let yeah. me write some words down. Well, so, so it doesn't create is, something that feels good, right? Right. So much is, is lost in that. If, if you start with, you know, with an idea that, that isn't true to you to begin with, then, then you're kind of losing something along the way. And I mean, I, I think a lot of, of real country music to begin with was, was written from sadness, just, just like the blues and things like that. You know, it, it comes from, from a place of hurt, a place of depression and sadness and, and, you know, financial troubles and, and reality, you know, those are real things that, that all of us experience throughout, throughout our life. And I think that being able to sit down and write about it, it kind of, it, it helps you move through it. It helps you get through it. And, and someone as a listener, like you said, if you can't sit down and write about it, to be able to just listen to someone who's experienced the same thing, you know, maybe in some way that that'll help help you along the way. Yeah. I can see that that would be therapeutic for somebody. If you know, you're, you're talking about an experience that you managed to struggle your way through. And then somebody hears that song and they go, you know, I'm not alone. I, I, I've yep. got, I've got this guy singing a song to me right now who went through the same thing. And yeah, that's, it's good stuff. Well, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to write sometimes, a about a, about a subject and, and make it vague enough to where other people can relate it to themselves, you know, and, and I don't, I don't want to write and just specifically make it about me. I want other people to, to be able to hear it. And, and like you say, think, think, man, this, this almost feels like it was written about me. Yeah. You know? So when did you record your first song? Uh, 
we recorded uh, Storyteller a year ago this month. So, so right at a year ago, we actually recorded our first album. It was an acoustic album called Storyteller. Uh, it had 17 songs on it, over an hour of original music. And, and these were, these were songs that I, that I've written over time. And I went in to kind of just record six or eight songs. And I, I've got so many piled up that, that we had time to do it. So we just kept recording, you know, and, uh, I, I kind of look at it like a, like a dam built up in my mind that I had to, I had to get some of these songs out and get them recorded and let whatever's coming down the river, you know, come on by. I had to, had to open the floodgates up and and let these songs out and, and so it's still flowing for sure. Oh yeah, you got to make room for it. So as 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 our listeners are following the show and listening to it, you know, can they find your music on Spotify and yep. Apple Music and all of that stuff? Yeah, I'm on I'm on Spotify and and Apple and anywhere you stream music online. We're on we're on every platform. Uh, we've got all all social medias. I'm at Joe Clark Music on on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, TikTok, uh, they can find us about any platform you stream music. Uh, we're on it. All right. Well, if you got a song for us, Joe, off uh, that last album, I'll uh, I'll do you one of the first songs I ever wrote. Uh, this actually, I wrote this. When I was probably sixteen or seventeen years old. Uh, you know, before I knew a whole lot about the about the real world. And this song's kind of stuck with me ever since. I I think this will be a song that will stick with me through the rest of my life. Uh, this song I wrote about my daddy. It's called Long Haired Southern Hippie. Spend most of my time by the old Kentucky River. I'm as country as can be, there ain't no doubt. That I was raised up by a long haired southern hippie. And make some money I'd stay as poor as hell My friend, I'm not ashamed You know I ain't ashamed well, My daddy's done his own fair share of hard work Swinging his rock hammer all day Just a beating on stone Ain't no retirement, ain't gonna have no mansion But by God, he's got his family, he's got his home well, I was raised up by a long-haired southern hippie And he learned me to be proud of my name chance to get rich and make some money I'd stay as poor as hell my friend I'm not ashamed I can't be ashamed Made some hard times for my family. We cut our own wood to feed the stoves to make it through. You don't worry about no grocery store when you get hungry. We just all go through the woods to we'll kill our own damn food. Cause I was raised up by a long haired southern. And make some money I'd stay as poor as hell My friend, I'm not ashamed I can't 
can't be ashamed well, I was raised up by a long-haired southern hippie And if I had the chance to get rich and make some money I'd stay as poor as hell, my friend, and I'm not ashamed I'd stay as poor as hell, my friend I ain't ashamed That's some good stuff. Thank you, man. I mean, I, I love your voice. It's it's got that nice rasp to it. You know, when you're sitting here talking and you're just talking voice, you're kind of a little bit deep and buttery, but right, the rasp comes out when you sing a little bit. Well, I, I've had to try to teach myself over time to to push. You know, yeah. I can say if, if you want people to believe it, you you got to feel what you're doing. I think. Yeah, I mean, it puts emotion into it. Right. I, I really like that song. It's a good song. And, Thank you. And so, what what kind of music did he listen to? Oh, I, I grew up on on Tom Petty and Tom Petty, Led Zeppelin, you know, Hart. That's all good stuff. Oh yeah, it's all good stuff. Yeah, yeah. my parents are, uh, you know, children of the late sixties and and seventies. So yeah, you know, it, I was I was introduced to to good music young. Yeah, I got an older brother that's six years older than me. That you know, he was a uh, he kind of grew up on more of the the grunge era. So. I had good influences all the way around me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm a little bit older than you, just just a tad. Right. But I remember my dad taking me to a Steppenwolf concert. All right. That was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say it was a good one, though. It was a good one. It definitely was. So, yeah, I, I, I did have a great time in the 70s attending concerts. So, yeah. Early 70s, right up until, you know, the late 70s, so. I think that, uh, you know, everybody says I was born in the wrong generation com- compared to what their parents listened to or when good music was out. And I, I don't I don't believe that for a second. I, I think there's always good music. It's just about finding it. It's about looking for it. And, you know, like we were saying earlier, if, you, if you're just looking at the radio or listening to the radio, you know, you're only going to find so much. So with the Internet nowadays, there's. There's so many good musicians. There's there's so much good music being put out all the time. So so is that a good thing? So I mean, as far as the the access to the people that you have now, right? The access you have by recording a song and and putting it out on social media. Well, I think it's a it, for a listener. It's it's a real good thing. Mm-hmm. You know, as, if you if you're looking for music, all you got to do is is look. You just search the internet. You, you're going to find it. Now, as as someone trying to be heard. You know, it makes it a little more difficult because uh, we went to we went to Nashville a few weeks back, and it's it's so oversaturated, and there's so many good musicians playing at the same time. It's hard to really it's hard to really pick one out, you know. Yeah. And so I I think uh, it kind of works against itself when when there's so many people doing the same thing, but at the same time, it's as we're all out here just trying to be heard. I I, I think it it has kind of it's kind of like direct sales, right? I mean, you, you can, you can play your music directly for the people who want to hear it. You don't have anybody in between the two of you too right. much. And there's good and bad to that because distributors or, um, labels or whatever they are, they, they're in the business of promoting musicians and getting yeah. records out. But, uh, self-promoting artists today actually have access to through social media to an awful lot of listeners and yeah. whether they can break through or not, that's another thing. I mean, it's, there's a lot of people out there doing it, but well, it has changed the game. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's why it's important to, to be completely who you are when, when it comes to, to writing and playing, you know, cause if there's always going to be someone who will appreciate it, if, if you're really putting that feeling into it and I think kind of organically growing something, means as much to me as 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 selling anything you know uh, i don't want to have to go out and and chase down for somebody to listen uh, it it should grow organically if if i'm saying what i need to say well enough and somebody will be out there to hear it and, and you've got quite a following right well it's it's gotta it's gotta grow somehow it, it grows know? that's right it grows over time yeah. and, and it builds on itself and as long as you're authentic i think it will continue to grow yeah 
well, I don't, there's no time to, to fake your way through life. They say fake it till you make it, but you know, <laughs> that, that's kind of hard to do when, when you don't know how to be fake in the first place. Yeah. yeah. I, I think there's a few careers in this world where you might be able to get away with that, but I don't think, uh, what you do is one of them. No. So you got to be authentic or, or people are going to see right through it. They can hear right through it is yeah. what they do. That's right? it. That's it. I mean, it, if when, when I get on stage, if, if I'm not up there putting everything I got into it, people will pick you out. If you're the one standing on stage, they'll, they'll see right through you if you, if it shows, you know. So how many, how many nights will you do this year, um, out in front of your fans? Oh, I, I do, uh, I do three, about three, at least three a week. Yeah. So, I I mean, how, however many that adds up to be. Well, that's about 156 yeah. shows a year. That's pretty good. When we do, sometimes we do two in a day, you know, I, I, I can't, I can't sit still. I was taught young. If you, if you lay down, you never get back up. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's about keeping it moving at all times. Yeah. I've been told that as I get older and my bones get stiffer, you need to get up and my wife tell my wife tells me you gotta get up and move. Yeah. Got to cut gotta that gotta grass and do something. <laughs> well, you know, if, if you become stagnant, that's, that's what'll happen. And in today's world, you, you'll get left behind quick Yeah, with, with what I'm doing, the, the business I'm in, if you don't, if you're not making noise, you know, people forget about you. Well, I know we've come out to see you before and you always pack the house. It's always a great time, at, at least at the barrel room here. You said it's one of your favorite spots. It's one of ours, too. Yeah. But um, I always notice that when you're there playing that the, it, it's a pretty full venue. Yeah. And it's it, it takes time to to grow a to grow a real following, you know, organically and uh I figure if I just, if I keep on the same path as, as long as it's working, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Just, just keep adding to it and, and try to hone in on my craft and hopefully people will tag along. So in, in the beginning of the show, I mentioned to our listeners that I'll be drinking on some Cooper's craft 100, but I didn't mention what you're drinking because you're not. And there's a little bit of a story there that uh, I think there's some value in that we might be able to share with the listeners if you're up for it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, I started drinking pretty young, uh, you know, and, and ain't a whole lot to do where I, where I grew up. So, uh, we, we hit it hard once we, once we really started hitting it and it, it kind of got out of hand for me. I, I've got an addictive personality. I, I will openly say that I'm an addict and, uh, I've, I've never denied it along the way, but, uh, I've been, I've been two and a half years, sober now i ain't had a drink in two and a half years and uh it, it's changed my life completely I, I honestly believe if if i hadn't quit that i wouldn't be sitting here with you today so well in what you do uh, you know on the stage in front of crowds you've got drinks coming up to you all night long people are buying you drinks or sending them up to you yeah uh, it can easily get out of hand well and, and it did i you know I, I let it get out of hand knowing it was getting out of hand the, the whole time kind of it's and it wasn't a quick process and I kind of, I just kind of sat in it for years. And, you know, I think, I believe there's, there's some people that can, they can hold it together when it, when it comes to, to drinking. And I, I'm just not one of them. You know, I, if I'm going to drink it, I'm going to drink all of it. And, you know, I, I knew at a certain point in time that, that I had to, I had to really get a hold of it. I, I've got four kids and, you know, I, I was taken away from, from who I could be for them. And, uh, if if I hadn't quit it, it just would have spiraled even further downward. Yeah. I, I think, you know, we, we often talk about on the show a day, a week, a week, a month, a month, a year, you know, away from drinking yeah. to keep yourself balanced and, uh, to keep, you know, to keep an eye on, you know, cause what we do is we drink all the time as, as part of our show right? and we promote drinking, but it's, uh, we don't want our listeners to, take it that we're we're drinking all the time yeah you know um if you can't find a way to go a day without a drink or if you can't plan for a week away from it if you can't stretch once in a while to a month without it you got a problem yeah and you need to pay attention to it and you got to deal with it in your own way but uh if those things become too hard for you or you can't do them it's time to wake up. Well, I think it's important to know that, you know, if, if you feel like you're, you're struggling, if you, if you feel like you got this weight on you and, and you know that it's being caused, you know, on your, if you're causing it to yourself, that uh, there's, there's light on the other side of it. And it's easy to, it's easy to get lost in that, 
in your own darkness, you know, yeah. whether it's, whether it's drinking or any sort of addiction, you know, I, I smoked cigarettes for years and, uh, I ain't had a cigarette since 2009 now. And that was another thing that I could tell it's, it was taking a toll on me and, and especially in this business, you sure. know, uh, there's no way I could keep a voice if, if I continue down this path. So I think it's, it's important to be realistic with yourself. You know, and I, I imagine it wasn't easy to do, especially with what you do. Like I said, yeah. you know, your job is to play in places that serve alcohol yeah. and you got loyal fans who love you who are passing drinks up to you all the time and you have to just sip yeah. on your Coke or your water. Right. Well, and it's, you know, it's, it's been a transition I've had to make while on stage, you know, while I'm, I'm going through this, this addiction and this struggle and, and trying to break out of it. I've, I've tried to be open about it. I, I like to be transparent, especially while I'm on stage so that, so that people know who I am. You know, so that I don't have anything to hide and, and to be completely open with people and let them know that, you know, I, I'm going through this thing and I'm trying to get out of it. And, you know, music is what has brought me out of it. My family and, and the music I play is, has literally saved me from it. So good for you. You've got a song for us that kind of yeah uh, speaks to that. This, uh, this song here, we put this out as a single after we released Storyteller. Uh, it's kind of, it kind of just kind of wraps up, you know, struggle and all it's, it's a, it's a vague description of a lot of, a lot of different struggles I've had and, and kind of facing the reality of things. And yeah, it's, it's called, it is what it is.
take me back to the kid I was Back before I needed to believe in anything Myself, I've lost it. I can't find. I know I'm gonna have to keep moving on like this. There's something inside of me broken, it can't be fixed. But it is what it is. But it is. song we all say that right it is what it is yeah yeah it's a i think it's kind of a overall vague statement that we don't always mean yeah i mean yeah it it kind of is true i mean you say it is what it is it's just like you don't want to deal with it it's like yeah all right it's just a way to push reality to the side sure well i want to thank you for being honest with us and raw and, and talking about that because i do believe we have listeners out there uh who are struggling with drinking and um, I hope they can listen to the, your words and, and understand that there is light at the end of the tunnel. You can conquer it. And that's actually a strength. That's not a weakness. Right. To be able to conquer it. So well, I think I think we're all stronger than we than we let ourselves on to be. You know, yeah. it, it's about it's about belief, you know, and I, I don't mean religion or, or anything along those lines. No matter what you what you believe, you got to believe in yourself to be able to get through certain things. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's what it takes. All right. Yourself. Well, we're going to take a short break and when we come back more Joe Clark and more music. Thank you. As we mentioned earlier in the show, we hope you'll join us this fall on October 6th and 7th for Bourbon on the Banks. The festival itself is from 2 to 6 p.m. on October the 7th, and you can pick those tickets up at bourbononthebanks.org for $65. They also have an early access ticket for $75. It'll get you in an hour early and definitely get you access to some special pours. But if you always like that VIP access, this year they're bringing in the VIP access tickets. We'll give you access to their VIP tent and all the great things that go along with that for $175. Be sure to check out bourbononthebanks.org. You'll get all the details on this year's event. I did manage to, to finish off that first little pour of Cooper's Craft, and I've got a second glass in front of me here now, and I'm kind of enjoying it, folks. I think it's a, I think it's a good pour. If you get a chance to pick up a bottle of this, uh, it's uh, in the low twenties. So I mean, well, I mean, you can find it for twenty two to twenty five bucks. So definitely not a bad deal. I don't mind picking up a bottle when it's like that. It's those eighty dollar bottles that really catch me by surprise. So. I would highly suggest it. It's a it's a good whiskey. It's four to six year old bourbon. It's a hundred proof Cooper's Craft Brown Foreman Distillery out of Louisville, Kentucky. That's what I'm sipping on in the second half. So, Joe, you're playing in a lot of places, and not just not just on the Bourbon Trail, right? I mean, you get outside. You play a number of states in the surrounding area. Yeah, we've uh we've been trying to to spread out quite a bit here here the last six months to a to a year. You know, I, I think it's important to, to get in strangers' ears sometimes. you Once you get a, a following in your hometown, the, those people, I think, will, will stick by you as, as long as you're doing it. But uh, getting out beyond where you live is, is important to, to be heard. So when you're playing in packed houses in and around kind of bourbon country here, and everywhere you go, people know you. you got your crowd that kind of follows you. A few of them follow you around, and you've got people that just uh, – I mean, they're your fans. 
what's it like when you go off to Dayton, Ohio or something or wherever it might be and, and you walk into a place and they don't know you? Well, it's, it's, it's that much more important to, to do it as, as good as I can do it. You know, we, uh, we did a run up in Illinois a few weeks ago. Uh, we did five shows in four days, all, all within about, uh, two to 300 miles of each other there. And it, it was cool to, you know, to, to meet new people and, and some of the people up there, like with the way the internet works, you know, people can check you out before you even show up. So, sure. uh, we try to try to make sure we, we're, we're as loud and, and aggressive as possible with, with the point we want to get across while we're there and in, in the time we have available to us and, and try to make sure that the people want to want to hear more once we leave. So do you do all that internet stuff or you got somebody? No, I, yeah, I got a couple of people that, uh, that helped me out. It wasn't until a few years ago that I, I really dove very deep into the, in social media and stuff like that and, and tried to, you know, make a name for myself that way. And you almost have to have it nowadays to, especially yeah. if you're going to travel out any further, you know? So yeah, I, I had to have some help with it. Yeah. I mean, it's good to focus on what you're good at, right? Yeah. I mean, you get a, the music part and hopefully you got some good people with you that can handle the other stuff. Well, and you know, if, if I want to focus on playing and writing and I don't want to get too overwhelmed with, with trying to post stuff. I know, you know your manager was a pleasure to deal with. Absolutely. Yeah. She, she's really helped out a lot. And, you know, between I, I got a guitar player that that travels around with me most of the time, Justin Chapel. He uh, he's best lead guitar player I could ever ask for, and uh, we've we've been through a lot at this point. And you know, at, that kind of we do a lot of duo stuff. That really helps the show when we go out. You know, and instead of just sitting and one guy with a guitar, sometimes to to add that lead to it, and you know, adds a little excitement to it. Yeah, absolutely. No, he he's on an electric lead. No, we we do a an acoustic duo an acoustic, a lot of times. Acoustic yeah. duo, okay. Yeah, we uh, we've got we might have some band stuff coming up here soon. I won't say too much about it, but uh, we we've got some things that lined up that that'll be exciting for everybody. I think. So you get to you get to Indiana, you get to Kentucky, yeah, we, of course, Illinois, Tennessee, yeah, Ohio, yeah, all, all the surrounding states. We'll uh we'll be in New York this year. I got some stuff coming up in out in Nebraska and Kansas and Oh yeah. We're well, yeah. getting out there. Yeah, trying to reach a little further out each time. Well, I think we have listeners in all those places. So I think what they ought to do is take this take this opportunity to to go into social media. What is it? Joe Clark music? Yeah, Joe Clark music on on all the social media platforms, Facebook and uh Instagram, TikTok. We're on TikTok we're Storyteller five oh two. That come from that that last album. Uh, but everything else is Joe Clark music. I noticed somewhere, I can't remember which social media was on. There was another Joe Clark music, but it was, uh, it was a younger kid cl- kind of clean cut. So if he doesn't have a beard, it's the wrong guy. Yeah. We, we <laughs> long haired bearded people around here. <laughs> yeah. Joe Clark's pretty common name. It's, you know, I'd say yeah. there's a lot of them, a lot yeah. of them out there. So absolutely. It's important to be as much a Joe Clark as I can be. Yeah. You know, so you've got a new album coming out. And that is something that's uh, about to drop. You have released a new single lately. Yeah. Yeah. We put out a song called Don't Give Up On Me uh, about two weeks ago off this upcoming album. Uh, this new album is called 10 Years Too Late. Uh, and it's kind of a, I had about six or eight songs that I, I wanted to get recorded that were really important to me to to get put down and to, to put out at some point in time and uh, kind of in the process of of trying to get lined up to get them recorded. Uh, I was still writing. I was still putting stuff down on paper. And, and by the time we went to record it, I, I had 13 songs together to, to record that weekend. Uh, it's an acoustic album. I, I wanted it to sound as raw and as pure as, as, as could be. I wanted it to sound like us. It was just, just me and Justin sitting down two acoustics, you know, just like me sitting here with you today talking, uh, I wanted it to to be authentic. I didn't want to add a bunch of bells and whistles to it and and make it something that it wasn't. You know, it's important that uh these songs get across exactly what I want to say. I I want them to just hear that. You know? And where did you record at? Uh, it's a place called Fat Cave Studios down in Slade, Kentucky, down in the mountains. Oh, I love Slade, Kentucky. Yeah, what a beautiful place. Yeah, I, I grew up going Red River Gorge down there, and uh, I got a few friends. I, I played a 
a little venue down there called Pit House, really cool place. And oh yeah, there's a uh, there's a little studio attached to it. My buddy Sam, he uh, he did a really really cool job on this on this album. I'm, I'm I'm really excited for people people to hear these these songs. Some of them we've played live, but some of them are, are songs nobody's ever heard. And uh, out of everything I've ever done, these these songs mean the most to me personally. And ten years too late. I mean that's a uh... You're talking about 10 years too late to get these songs recorded or 10 years too late for, for everything. I think all, you know, there's, there's one thing that, that everybody has in common and that's time. Yeah. No matter what kind of life you live, you know, uh, we're, we're all here at the same time. It, it, we all exist right here, right now. And I think, uh, if you want to really do anything in your life that, that means anything to you, that you're no matter what, you're going to feel like you're a little bit behind. Yeah. If you've got any ambition to do anything and I, I've had this overwhelming thing over me my whole life that, that I gotta, I gotta get things done. I gotta keep this moving, you know, and I, I've always felt like I was behind on, on something, you know, whatever it may be. And I, that's good and bad that, that helps push me to, to do as much as I can and to do it the best I can. Yeah. I know that, I know that when I leave this world, I ain't going to have a lot of money and I ain't going to have a lot to, to leave behind for my children, but, but what I will leave behind is is the story of myself. So. You didn't leave anything undone, right? That's it. Yeah. I mean, there's a song on country music today, and I, I'm not going to name the artist or the song because I can't remember it. But it, it talks about you can do this until you can't, right? You can yeah. you can you can rebuild that Chevy with your grandpa until you can't. Until you can't. That's yeah. right. Well, you know, I'm I'm 33 right now, and I figure I've I've got a period of time here to to really push as as hard as I can to to even try to be heard in a, in a world full of people just wanting to be heard. Yeah. You know, and uh, hopefully I can, I can get across some sort of message that, that means something to me that, that can mean something to someone else. And I'm not interested in making people dance. You know, I, I just want people to feel something. Sure. If someone can hear one of my songs and, and take something away from it and, you know, and they can think about that later on in life and, and it'll mean something to them, you know, I ain't out to make you dance. I want to make you cry. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so if you got something you can play for us, it might break it, make us cry. I'll actually do uh, the title song of this album, 10 Years Too Late. supposed to keep up to a world I left behind a long time ago well, maybe it wasn't me that messed up well maybe this old world don't want me here no more well, it looks like I've got left behind world is running past me like a race my clock's run out and I'm all out of time it looks like I'm ten years too late supposed to be here At the rate I'm moving now I won't ever last I thought by now that somehow I would see clear But I'm living like a man that can't escape his past and It looks like I've got to live behind me like a race well, my clock's run out and I'm all out of time it looks like I'm ten years too late oh now it looks like I'm ten years too late everything that I've ever wanted to do
could have You know I would have We won't ever know It looks like I've got left behind This world is running past me like a race My clock's run out and I'm all out of time It looks like I'm ten years too late now it looks like I'm ten years too late. What a great song. Thank you. Really like that. So how many songs are on your new album? Thirteen. Thirteen songs. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that release party you got coming up. Yeah, so uh, April 29th, Saturday, uh, it's in uh, Eminence, Kentucky, at the Kentucky Highland Renaissance Fair site. They have the they have the Renaissance Fair there. It's a, it's a really cool place. Uh, it's a big, giant building. And uh, So is the fair, is the Renaissance Fair actually that weekend? No, it's not actually going on that weekend. Okay, We're just, I've been to it before. Yeah. It's quite an experience. <laughs> I, I played the the Froggy Field party there a couple of years in a row. They they used to have a a, a big shindig there from a Froggy Radio out of yeah. Frankfurt. Yeah, they they had some big concerts there. We actually got to to play one year there. Yeah, uh, it's the same site there. It's it's an interesting group of people. My brother, he's really into that stuff. He he loves yeah. it. He loves to go to the Renaissance fairs and he gets into character and all that. But uh, we went up to eminence to the renaissance fair probably two years ago and, and just really took in the day and we're just normal people we're not dressed up we're not in character or anything like that we had a blast it was yeah. so much fun yeah we we take the kids about every year uh it's really cool like I say it's just something to see yeah but uh I, i'm good friends with the with the owners there and that michaela's ends with the building they call the building and there's a there's a cool stage in there a big fireplace and we're hoping for good weather so we can uh, leave the doors open, you know, hope for a good for a good crowd. Well, how can up. people find out about this in case they want to attend? We uh, There's tickets available on a, an Eventbrite link, uh, and we, we post it all over social media. So if you go to our, our Facebook page, Joe Clark Music, we uh, every couple of days we've been posting about it there, and, and we put links up for tickets there. Uh, I got my good buddy, Brandon Martin. He's going to open the show for us, and – Brandon's a, a really, I mean, just an excellent musician. Uh, he's a powerhouse, got a big old voice. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing his set myself. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it sounds great. We might try to make it up there. Yeah. Uh, April 20, 29th. 29th. Yeah. Awesome. Not this coming Saturday, the next coming Saturday. So, so what, what's your future look like here? You say you're paying, playing roughly three nights a week. Uh, what's it look like here for the, say the next month or so, are you going to be pretty much in Kentucky or are you going to be traveling out? Yeah, we've, uh, this two days before the release party, uh, we play an Americana fest with a, with, with a couple of really killer musicians, Cody Lee Meese and, and Jake Cohn. And, uh, that's at, uh, legacy at Dant crossings where the, Oh, you're going to be at Dant crossing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We've got a couple of them coming up there. I was just talking to Chef Dan- David Danielson from, he's the chef down at Dan Crossing. Yeah. And uh, he and Wally, I think, I think we're going to try and go down and do a show with them. I'd love to do that one day and then stick around for whatever comes in the evening, like yeah. you or right. something like that. That would be great. Yeah. We got, we'll be there that, uh, that Thursday evening and then uh, Nashville the next night and then the release party the next night. And uh, I got another run in Illinois coming up in about three weeks. Uh, we're going to do another another five shows in four days up there. So, uh, I mean, we've, we've got them lined up, I mean, for the rest of the year. You know, uh, I'm full-time, so I got to try to stay as busy as I possibly can. Well, you're full-time, but you, you got to take a break every now and then, right? So what do, when do you take a break and where do you go? 
well, this this is break right here for this me. This is it. <laughs> this is it. I, I live on 80 acres of woods. It's it's uh, two big hillsides right on the Kentucky River. So yeah, you know, when I'm at home, that's that's break for me. I I spend as much time as I can with the kids, you know. But like I said, if you don't keep moving, you'll get left behind. And so, business. how old are your children? Uh, I got one that's just turned five day before yesterday. Uh, his name's Lyric, and my little girl, she's eight. I got a boy who's 16 and a, and a daughter who'll be 21 in December. Yeah. We were doing introductions at work today and, and, you know, I, I'm a little bit older than the people I work with. So we were on a zoom call and we were doing introductions and we were all going around introducing each other because nobody knew each other in this particular meeting. And one guy said, <clears throat> I've got a three-year-old. I have no life, you know, cause everybody was <laughs> saying what they do for fun. Yeah. So yeah. he said he has no life and I'm thinking, yeah, I could, I could get that. Oh, it's, it keeps you busy. Then. But it, I mean, that is my life. That's, that's why I do everything I do yeah. to, you know, uh, I think it's important right now at this, at this stage for the younger kids, especially to, you know, show them that it, it takes hard work to, to do anything in life. And with, with what I'm doing, you know, I, I have to keep pushing. I have to, I have to basically stand up and say, Hey, I'm here, you know, to be able to get things done. So your children, they like a country life. Oh yeah. Yeah. They oh, love living, yeah. living out there. Now are they, are they each other's best friends? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Sometimes. sometimes, a couple of hours of the day they will be. Yeah, they they wild. I mean, my my little boy, he's he's wild as a buck deer, you know. And uh, my parents always tell me I deserve everything I'm getting, <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, I remember when I remember when I was uh, when I was growing up, I would always take my dad's tools and I'd go out in the yard and I'd work on stuff and I'd leave him out there and he'd find him six months later all rusted. <laughs> and he's uh, he always used to tell me one of these days my my grandson's going to revenge me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's like it. My grandson's going to take your tools and go put them in the yard, right? Yeah. What was the other way around? My son was absolutely organized and meticulous with this stuff, and I borrowed his tools, left them in the yard, and they rusted. Yeah, there so. you go. He's still holding on to it. <laughs> well, my my older kids they they've been pretty laid back their their whole life, but you now the two younger ones they they gonna yeah. give me some trouble, and I'm I'm ready for it. Bring it on. There you, you go. Know. There you go. Well, we're hoping you'll play one more song for us um, off this new album, something that nobody's heard yet, something to, you know, tease us a little bit. What do you think? That sounds good to me. We All can right. do it. So uh, we just put this song out as a as a single a couple weeks ago, actually. This is off the new album. It's a tune called Don't Give Up On Me. Back to 
to the man that you need me to be But just try to hang on for a little while longer mm-hmm. Don't give up on me I'm fighting these demons alone I'll find my way back to you I'll find my way back home Don't give up on me I know that I've put you through hell I've tried not to ask you for nothing But right now Back to the man that you need me to be If you can just hang on for a little while longer ooh, Don't give up on me Don't give up on me You can definitely hear the hurt and struggle in that song. And it's <laughs> yeah. kind of vague, but does that have to deal with kind of the same situation we were talking about before? Oh, yeah. 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 I, I try to write, you know, from from personal experience. I, I don't like to make up stories, but I, I try to write it in a way that, that it could apply to you, you know, that, that you could take a song and listen to it and, and think, man, that, that almost sounds like it was written about something that's happened to me. Yeah. You know, but at the same time, make it make it personal enough that that I can play it and, and feel it while I play. Sure. It. Yeah. Because, I mean, you need to emote that out of yourself. But I guess if you keep it vague enough, then people can like fit their situation into it. Right. Right. If you get too specific, they can't do that. Yeah. Well, I think we all we all kind of relate in in some way, you know, in different things. I mean, we all we all struggle with certain things, whether we admit it or not. You know, I think it's important to to face reality sometimes. And and this I mean, this is how I get through it myself. Well, Joe, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. Such a great story. Such awesome music. I want to let our listeners know that we Joe has given us one of his albums uh, to give away, and uh, we're going to do that. So here's here's how you win his album, and we'll ship it out to you. It's uh, Joe Clark, 10 Years Too Late. It's on a CD. I know some of you still have CD players. Uh, definitely want to get your hands on this one, but here's how you do it. Uh, We have a private Facebook group called the Bourbon Roadies. There's about, oh, 3,000 to 3,500 members on there. And uh, so if you're not a member of that group, go ahead, join it. Just go to Facebook and search out the Bourbon Roadies and ask to join. It's pretty immediate. You can join and become a member. Once you're in there, uh, we ask you to make a post. Just make a post. Listen to the Joe Clark episode. Really had a good time. And I want his first album or, or <laughs> second album. This is your second album. The second one, yeah. We want uh, the 10 Years Too Late album. So if you'll make that post in the Bourbon Roadies, uh, we'll make sure to reach out to you in a PM and we'll send this album out to you. So thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to Joe Clark on this episode. And we'll make sure we get this uh, this album out to you. If you're number one, you got to be number one, right? Number two, we'll get a thank you for responding, but uh, number two, I mean, number one, we'll get the album, but number two, we'll just get a thank you. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> I appreciate it. I've had I've had a good time with you here, man. Yeah, it's a good time. It's been a lot of fun. So uh, one more time, I'd like to give you an opportunity to tell people website, social media addresses, where can they hear, where can they hook up with you? And, and, and folks, take the time while he's saying this to go ahead and pull up your phone and, and and follow him right now. So you got this. Yeah. We, uh, we're on all social media platforms. Uh, of course we do primarily Instagram and Facebook and, uh, it, it's all Joe Clark music. Um, we're on TikTok at storyteller five Oh two. Uh, but it's, you can use a hashtag Joe Clark music on there and, and it'll come up. Uh, we're on Spotify and Apple music. 
uh, we're really trying to get our Spotify numbers up because that, that's where people are listening. And, uh, yeah, if you go, go follow all that stuff, that really helps us out. And, uh, I'm just out here trying to tell my story and feed my babies and, I appreciate everybody listening. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Joe. We appreciate you being on the show. Well, folks, you can follow us on all the social medias. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on, I mean, you could say, hey, Alexa, play the Bourbon Road podcast and up will come our latest episode. So definitely follow us on all those social media, or at least the ones that you use. Follow us and We'd love to have you listen to every show that we put out. If you want to make sure you don't miss one, just just whatever app you're on right now, that podcast app, whether it be Apple or Spotify or Google Podcasts or whatever it is, just scroll it up to the top and hit that subscribe button. And every single week, you'll get a notification that uh, Jim and crew has put out another episode. And we'd love to have you listen to an episode every single week from us. It's great. You're sweeping the house, you're mowing the lawn, you're driving to and from work, whatever it is, we'd love to have you listen to our episodes. If you've got an idea for a show, if you've got an artist, if you've got a bottle, if you've got a distillery in your hometown that's doing it right, let us know about it. We'll reach out to them. We'll see if we can't get them on a show. Uh, We always try to put out quality content every single week, and uh, we certainly hope you enjoyed today's show. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you listen to us. Go to our website, though. We do have some swag on there. You can get a Bourbon Road t-shirt or a hat or one of our glasses. Uh, Join the Bourbon Roadies. It's always a great deal of fun. There's a whole bunch of people in there that just love drinking bourbon and talking about it. Uh, Make sure that uh, you take the opportunity each week to tune in to the Bourbon Road podcast. We'd love having you listen today. And until the next time, we'll see you down the Bourbon Road. (laughs) 